Good lord, I'm lazy. Anyway, here we are. Finally, we are our first Peter Gabriel album in 21 years, at least for original music. So, pretty big deal. IO finally came out, even though he sprinkled the entire record throughout the entire year. Yes, the every single song was released throughout the whole year, which is pretty unique. I'll give him that, but... Honestly, I hope no one ever does that again, because that's really obnoxious. Anyway, so yeah, we're talking about his eight main studio albums. I'm not talking soundtracks, or the one that's all symphonyified or the cover ones. None of that stuff, just the eight main ones. Um, I got my top five right back here behind me, so yeah. Pretty good discography overall, must say. There's only two that I didn't really like, which we'll talk about very shortly. Um, or now, because let's just get right into it. Let's go. Yeah, so Up, I'm not really f a fan of. I don't think I want to listen to this one again, because first of all, it's really, really damn long. It's like, what, an hour and six minutes it also just feels like super disjointed because especially one of the songs, I forgot what it was called, but it was like super bricked ass loud stuff. And then it would suddenly abruptly go to something very mellow and then it would get super loud again. I just felt like that was kind of the whole thing, how everything just kind of dragged because all the songs are just super long, like six, seven minutes darkness. I think it was darkness. The first song that did that, I was like, wow, that's not fun yeah it was darkness i wrote it down that it was my definitely my least favorite gabriel song definitely darkness i don't like that song you know the only tracks i really kind of liked were sky blue and signal to noise uh some parts of those songs were all pretty all right but yeah overall this one's definitely not for me man i'm, I'm glad he at least it's crazy that that was the last one for 20 years so, good thing he made his other one a little better. And the other one I don't really like is the fourth one, Security. Because, yeah, kind of like Up, a lot of it is just like a lot slower and a lot more weird things going on. Like, I think he was just getting a little too... Uh, quirky with it once again not much I enjoy on here the only songs that I really kind of like are family fishing net because that kind of sounds like some spy movie soundtrack stuff and that was pretty cool and then wallflower was all right but yeah just overall this one is just a little too out there and not my cup of tea as the British would say because he's British I know Shock the Monkey's a big song on here, but even that one, I just thought it was kind of a little repetitive and, you know, just, I don't know. Not for me. Okay, and as a point of reference, the next six are all good albums. So, it all kind of depends on which songs I like more than the other ones. Because basically, every single one of these albums pretty much has the same shit where I like two or three songs a lot and then everything else is just kind of, okay, that exists. So, yeah. So, up next. You and I still play for time. And his latest release, IO, coming in at number six. And this one is interesting because there's like, there's two versions of it. And not neither one of them is like the correct version. So, you're just stuck with two different mixes. I Honestly, I don't know why. I didn't notice a giant difference between them. Um, obviously, there's some differences, but not enough to really warrant ever listening to, like, like who cares? Just pick one and you're fine with it. Because this one has a lot of, like, his slower songs. But, however, on the flip side, Playing for Time is actually my favorite song on this album. Which is surprising because it's one of the slow ones. And usually, these are the ones I tend to just forget about. I don't know. For some reason, this one really stuck with me. And then we have Oliver Tree. That actually kind of sounds something off of So, because So is has some of those, like, really... Well, we'll talk about that one in a little bit. But, 
you know, it has like the, the big band feel vibes to it. So yeah, it's definitely one of the more fun songs. And then, yeah, like I said, pretty typical feelings. Like there's a few highlights and there's 12 songs on here and there's just kind of like up. This one's really long, but I can excuse it because it's been 20 years. So yeah, hell yeah, just dump all this stuff on here. But yeah, there's a lot of, there's a bunch of songs on here I don't care for that much, like The Court and Four Kinds of Horses, you know? And a lot of the ending, last few songs, still pretty solid. I don't want to sound like I hated it, but definitely not one of my favorites of his. Okay, are you guys ready for number five? Because, oh my god, I'm sure it's going to piss a lot of people off. But, yo man, it is what it is. Because I've been hearing how good So Was for the longest time. Even my friend bought me this CD um, just because, like, he wanted me to listen to it because he really likes it. And I heard a lot. Like, it's, it's his biggest album, so I was expecting some like something crazy. But in the end, it kind of felt like Fragile by Yes, where there's, like, the two or three really good songs. And then everything else is just kind of, like, okay, really? This, the, this is the one? Because, yes, Sledgehammer is a fantastic. Like, that's one of the songs that just commands to be played on stage with, like, ten people. That's kind of what I was saying with Oliver Tree off I.O. It's kind of along the same lines as that. And then also Big Time also goes pretty damn hard, especially with the bass line. Good old Tony Levin kicking ass as usual. But, yeah, then we have the three songs in the middle with, like, Don't Give Up, That Voice Again, and In Your Eyes, which are just kind of whatever. And then Mercy Street gets good, too. So yeah, and then the last two songs are like more weird shit that I was just talking about with the stuff on security. So like, yeah, once again, we have the three main standouts and then everything else is just kind of meh. But yeah, out of the th three standouts, those are all very good. But uh, the, the, the next albums above just have more songs that I enjoy on it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs> All right, now we have his debut with Carr, and this one has the big mama jam on it, you know, with Salisbury Hill, and I gotta be honest, because I saw this was his most played song, and I was like, okay, well, I guess this is the one, right? And I listened to it, and the acoustics immediately were, like, vaguely familiar, but I didn't really recognize it, surprisingly, um, and then when it was finished, I was just like, okay, really why is is that that's the big one guys really um so i didn't get it the first time but then i saw there was this live performance that they stitched together a bunch of concert footage from different eras and i watched that and i was and then it kind of hit me i was like okay now i get it i understand now because it's this very it's only like two parts of the song but both those parts are very good and just seeing them on stage playing it, just like dicking around and like looking like they're having the time of their lives. It definitely gives you a different sense for the song. And I do like it now. I really like, I really enjoy the song now. But yeah, I also really liked Modern Love. Really like the verses. It's a little more rocking. And then Down the Dulce Vita. Down the Dulce Vita. That one's a pretty cool song. It's like part funk, part epic part rock really good song so yeah once again you got the three main standouts on here but those three main standouts are pretty damn good okay now we have scratch the second album yes the second album uh this is actually where my journey with peter gabriel started because someone someone let me find out who Hold on, just, just in case you're watching. Shout outs to Davey Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I run the series every 100 subscribers I get where I have people send me their albums or just send me an album to listen to and it's just a big contest, yada, yada, yada. Um, and this guy sent me, I don't, know, I don't know if he messed up because he said Peter Gabriel 3 slash Scratch which those are two different albums. So I listened to both of them because I didn't know any better. Um, 
and they came in at number two and three, number three and two. So I really enjoyed both of them, and that was the first one. It's been like a year and a half since then. So if you're still watching, man, this one goes out to you. It only took me a year and a half to get to them, but here you go, right? Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed both Scratch and Melt, obviously. I mean, I haven't talked about Melt yet, so that's obviously very high up too. But yeah, uh, Scratch, I didn't like as much as the other one, but still really good. So like, you got Mother of Violence is a nice song. I uh, really love the piano in it. Then we have Animal Magic, where there's even more piano going ham in it. Um, I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much these days as I did back then, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, very solid album, and uh, they only get more solid from here. So I don't know how popular us over here is but i really enjoyed it honestly like maybe surprising because you know how usually it goes where like the middle of someone's career isn't usually the greatest you know but yeah this one i thought was pretty good like the first three tracks i really liked all of them you know i can totally dig on them when the mood is right because it is a different album but i liked it all right. It wasn't until the fifth track, Only Us, where I didn't really totally like a song. Because, yeah, the, I mean, I don't know why I said first three, but the first four, in fact, really enjoyed all of them. It's a very chill vibe throughout the whole album, and then sometimes it gets a little funky, like on Steam. And then there's also a couple other upbeat songs, but it doesn't get too crazy, you know? So, probably a little out of character for me, but, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this album, and I thought it was very good. <laughs> And coming in at number one is going to be Three's Melt. Yeah, still really like this album. So there being no symbols on this thing definitely gives it a unique vibe to it. And this also happens to have my favorite Peter Gabriel song with I Don't Remember. I just think that shit is really good. And I really love the, I don't know if that's the Chapman stick or just... Yes, that is a Chapman stick. The whole Chapman stick thing on there is just going super hard. And the chorus, I just always get stuck in my head. And then we have And Through the Wire, which I also really like. Those two, I even remember listening for the first time, like almost two years ago now, just really liking those songs. And yeah, the whole rest of the album is also pretty good. There is definitely the lowest amount of lows on here for me. And even if I don't immediately gravitate towards any of these songs they're all just really good like i just think this is it's definitely a unique experience in his catalog i mean i guess a lot of them are because some of them are very different and it just kind of depends on which vibe you want to go for so for me melts the way to go really enjoy this album so yeah that's my number one favorite peter gabriel album so yeah, all you fans out there, be sure to let me know if, especially if you've been following him, like I can't even imagine waiting 20 years in between albums. Uh, I just think it would probably have drove me insane trying to wait for the next one. But uh, yeah, let me know what your picks are and stay tuned for my end of the year videos where I round up all the things I listen to and give my favorites and yada, yada, yada. Almost time for Christmas, baby.